Hey guys, Noel here. It's Wednesday, and I've been wanting to do this uh, video for the channel for a while, and while I've got a little bit of time, I thought it would be a fun thing to do. Um, recently, I ordered a custom cartridge from a place called Gorilla Games. Um, now, normally, I, now I'm not opposed to ordering custom cartridges. I've never really done it before, uh, but I'm really happy with uh, what I got. And the reason I ordered this cartridge is because there are no literal hard copies officially released of the game that I wanted. And that game, my friends, is Radical Dreamers for the Super uh, Nintendo slash Super Famicom um, system. Now, in fact, I say that it's a little bit misleading because this was actually released for an add-on on the Super Famicom called the Saddle of You that was a service that allowed you to digi digitally download video game magazines, video games, um, and so on and so forth for your Super Nintendo. And I encourage you to Google our YouTube uh, Saddle of You videos because it was really interesting. It, you kind of like walked around a town and you would walk in places at certain times and certain places you could download the real life things that were being offered um, on the Saddle of You. And one of those things was Radical Dreamers, which was the uh, dark text based sequel to Chrono Trigger, maybe the best RPG um, ever, I would say the best RPG for sure on the Super Nintendo. Um, my first Chrono game was Chrono Cross, and Chrono Cross, according to the developer of Chrono Trigger, Radical Dreamers, and Xenogears, and ultimately Chrono Cross, uh, was an attempt to do Radical Dreamers the right way, according to him. I would strongly disagree, because I think that Radical Dreamers has a closer connection to Chrono Trigger, and the most exciting Radical Dreamer, and here's a great big spoiler, is Magus, because um, Magus is um, in uh, Radical Dreamers under the name uh, Magil. Um, Magus, uh, his he was supposed to be in Chrono Cross as Magil, um, but they decided to do like a Soikoden type thing, where they had a ton, like literally like something like 70 characters in the game, and the developers of Chrono Cross figured that, um, look into this, and you can, you can find all the information that, well, we've got so many characters, we can't properly do Magus' story right, so let's just cut him from the game and focus on Serge and Kid. Which is incredibly stupid, because, you know, the radical dreamers are Magus, Serge, and Kid, and Magus is the cool one that was actually in Chrono Trigger, so... Whatever. Uh, like I said, uh, 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 Radical Dreamers, the Chrono Trigger sequel, um, is a text-based RPG. Um, I found out about this game in 2004. In fact, I was so excited about it when I downloaded it, I wanted to make my own hard copy of it. So I actually burned it on a CD, did my original art, and, and, and printed it. And I actually printed uh, a jewel case for it right here did a whole kind of like you know description of the back of the game with screenshots and original art that i drew actually in crayon um and actually here is the saddle of you right here um that's what the saddle of you looked like um and you can find videos about the saddle of you on youtube this was my uh my front cover i was uh super into iron chef at the time so i also included a picture of chairman kaga uh and yeah so here was my uh, here's my artwork uh from 2004 so there's uh, Magil, Serge, and Kid. Serge looks quite different in Radical Dreamers. You don't see much of the Radical Dreamers in this game outside of seeing kind of what they look like walking from the back or, or what they look like reflected in mirrors as they walk around. Um, but it's not like in um, Chrono Cross where you, you know, see like full-blown, uh, you know, versions of the characters. Uh, Kid looks pretty much the same. Serge has a radically different redesign in Radical Dreamers. In Radical Dreamers, Serge wears a blue hood, has blonde hair, and doesn't fight with a double-edged sword. He fights with a dagger. Um, and it's the same idea. Lynx, uh, the villain in Chrono Cross, is the villain in Radical Dreamers. And here's another spoiler. Uh, you know, he holds a piece of Lavos known as the Frozen Flame. And um, Kid, the one of the the radical dreamer that really stands out the most is out to kill Lynx because Lynx killed Luca, the scientist from Chrono Trigger, who was a uh, kid's older sister, um, adopted older sister. Kid is in fact a reincarnation of Magus's sister, um, <laughs> who's uh, kind of been intertwined with Lavos, um, and that becomes a time devourer. 
Uh, that all get that all plays out much more in um, in Chrono Cross. Incidentally, if you like Chrono Trigger sequels, I highly recommend getting the DS version of Chrono Trigger because it attempts to uh, resolve the fact that Magus is not in Chrono Cross by giving him amnesia, uh, which makes you think that Magus is in fact the character Guile in Chrono Cross. Um, and you know, you can, uh, cause Guile's character was put in play. They had all the information for Magus in Chrono Cross, but rather than actually do his backstory, they just made a character that looked and acted like him, but doesn't actually mention anything about the past. But now that he's got amnesia as understood in, you know, the Chrono Trigger for Nintendo DS, it's like, oh, that's why he doesn't mention anything about the past. Cause he doesn't remember it. So, um, let me show you guys what the gameplay is like in Radical Dreamers. Um, I don't want to have this video be too long because the video game is essentially just reading, which I think is cool. Um, you may not. There are seven different endings to Radical Dreamers. You First, you do like the regular ending, and then what will happen is depending on the decisions that you make, you'll get radically different types of endings. Some are funny, some are serious, um, and you'll just have to play through the game to see all those different types of endings. One of them has Magus turning into kind of an Ultraman type character, you know, which, uh, which I, I like that one quite a bit. Um, that's one of the funny endings. Uh, all right, let's, uh, I dropped my controller. Let's, uh, get down to playing, and, uh, uh, here we go. Um, again, because this game is so dark, it's kind of hard to show up. I've turned the contrast way down. Here are the Radical Dreamers. There's, uh, Magus, or Magil, Serge, and there's Kid. And we're coming to an abrupt stop. We're trying to break into... Viper Manor, because someone wants to say hello. And out of a nearby thicket, two shimmering eyes uh, catch my attention. Whoever it is, it's staring at me silently. After a few moments, a few more pairs of eyes appear. They seem to be surveying the area. And it's a bunch of feral cats. Feral cats is actually one of uh, Lynx's moves in Chrono Cross. And if uh, we don't get rabies or feline aids, we'll be able to wrap this video up after this fight. Uh, so, a few of the figures slowly approach from behind the trees. I look behind me only to see that they've already encircled us. A few more slowly creep in, now totaling about ten. Chills run down my spine. In a daze, I clumsily unsheath my knife, grasping it tightly as I bite my lip. Kid stands ready with an air of composure. Careful, mate. These buggers are probably rabid. The growling increases, now a constant rumble all around us. Uh, their yellow eyes shimmer like jack-o'-lanterns, while saliva drips from their snarling jaws. The middle one's stomach gurgles as its eyes widen, fixed directly on me. Looks like we ain't getting out of this without a fight. What will we do? Attack, magic, or defend? Let's attack. I slash viciously at a nearby cat. Startled, it leaps back with incredible reflexes. I stay my ground, not getting any closer to the beast. I hearing a howl, I know I've hit my mark. Looking its wounds, the animal recovers after a moment of pain. I ready my knife for the next chance to attack. Serge, behind you. I turn around to see that I'm now face to face with a pair of ravenous yellow eyes. I'm going to attack again, but there's no time. I duck as the cat lunges and snaps at me. I smell the bloody odor of the cat's breath as it passes overhead. Just as I think it's past me, I feel its back claws dig into my back. Scrambling out of the way, I manage to shove my knife upwards, planting it deep within the animal's belly. The sound of death can be heard as the cat falls to the ground before me, barely moving. Almost delirious, I lose my balance and fall to my knees. Rolling over, I manage to shake off the confusion before any of the other cats get any closer to me. I take a deep breath and try to tighten my grip on my knife, now slippery with sweat. Then, out of nowhere, Kid flashes across my field of vision, landing a direct hit onto the cat beside me. The cat screeches in pain as Kid pins it to the ground, stomping and kicking it with all her rage. Without a moment's delay, she boots the animal up underneath its jaw and it moves no more. All of a sudden, the crazed atmosphere gives way to a war cry behind me. I whip around to see Magil's Inferno spell setting a cat's head ablaze. It jumps up, screeching and howling in madness before running wildly away in confusion. It hits a tree and knocks itself out cold. I look around and see that 
only one of the pack hasn't been taken care of yet. As Kid and I start to close in on the beast that bolts fearing for its life. Well, that was some workout, eh, mate, says Kid, coming towards me as she tends to her arm. I take a deep breath as I look around, trying not to step on too many of the bodies. I admit I was a little worried back there at times, but nothing too serious happened. I try talking to Maggle despite knowing how he'll react. Are you alright? With an expressionless face, he looks down at me blankly. You need not worry about me. Wow, the affection from this guy is just overflowing. However, I probably shouldn't start complaining now. We've still got a long way to go. We haven't even set foot inside Viper Manor yet. Kid glances over at me, seeming as eager as ever, ready to tackle what's next. You gonna hang around all night or what, mate? No way, let's go. Hey, come here. Trying to ignore my aches and pains, I head over towards Kid. Good job back there, mate. She comes closer. I can see the reflection of the moon in her eyes as she gives me a warm, comforting smile. But come on, we can't stand around all night. There's treasure waiting to be found. I'm still lost in her eyes as she starts and sets off. Maggle continues behind her without a hitch. I hurry to catch the two. In a place like this, getting separated would be a bad idea. We continue to make our way through this natural labyrinth of wood and rock. Somewhere... Quietly waiting within this huge forest, Viper Manor beckons us. Deep within lies the treasures we've come for. Lord Lynx, as he's formerly known, is an aristocrat who governs the Rajonia Outlands. From the way Kid talks, he's apparently an old adversary of hers. Tonight, our goal is Lord Lynx's most prized possession, a scarlet jewel known as the Frozen Flame. Besides being priceless, some say this beautiful stone harbors some sort of mystical power. They say many people have sought after the flame, but none have been victorious in stealing it. Viper Manor has claimed many lives. But we will succeed. Right, we pride ourselves on making the impossible possible. Besides, the way Kid talks about Lynx sometimes, it sounds like she's got an awfully personal vendetta against him. We can't lose. We've come too far to lose. So after having spent countless hours crossing the dreary, lonesome forest, the silhouette of a towering mansion finally comes into view through the trees. And there's Viper Manor. We made it, kid shouts. Your days are numbered, Lynx. We quickly make our move, quietly dashing out from a th behind the thicket. Once... At the mansion wall, we creep stealthily along the perimeter, searching for an entry point. After a short while, we come upon a terrace near the garden, which looks relatively inviting. It doesn't look like there's any guards on patrol. Still, the mansion gives off a strange sort of morbid feeling. It's quiet as death. Magil gazes up at the towering fortress. We can enter into the West Wing from here. There's no need to look elsewhere. Okay, let's go, Kid says, jumping over the terrace handrail. Halt, shouts Magil from behind the trees, staring at Kid. Our goal is the frozen flame, not vengeance on Lord Lynx. Remember this, Kid. Aye, no prob, she says, glancing over her shoulder. Ain't gonna be nothing to it. Like taking candy from a baby. We'll be out of here before that slimy rat knows what hit him. Yeah, you low-down good-for-nothing bastard, I'll make you pay. There she goes again. Come on, I'm getting tired of waiting around, she yells, before bolting into the mansion. Maggle shakes his head in silence as I chase after Kid, already deep inside. The darkness engulfs me. And guys, that really is uh, the opening to Radical Dreamers right there. And uh, how it works once you get into the mansion is you basically just uh, kind of choose where you want to go. Right here we can go right or go left. I'll choose to go right. And uh, then you're just going to get more text describing your environment. And um, you'll go into different rooms and the story will start to... Uh, develop and you'll be prompted to do different things. I really, really uh, enjoy this game, um, and it's a different style of game than a lot of 
uh, people might be used to when you think about Super Nintendo games. Usually you don't think about um, just sitting down and reading a video game. But if you're into Japanese role-playing games, those are heavy on the reading anyway. So this is uh, really much more of uh, much more words, much less visuals. But the visuals in this game are quite good. And in fact, you can't actually find a drawing of Kid by Masato Kato um, that came out around the time of this game in 1996. So Google that and look it up. Hopefully I've said everything that I need to say in this video. Um, and hopefully everything showed up the way it was supposed to show up, uh, you know, from the, from the CRT monitor to the to the camera here. So that's it, guys. Uh, until next time, my name is Noel. You take care of yourself, and I'll see you guys all soon. And uh, definitely, big thanks to Gorilla Games for making such a cool, hard copy of Radical Dreamers. And uh, I, I would recommend this game. Uh, definitely for people who say that video games can't be educational. This is a, You need to be highly literate. Well, not highly literate. You need to be fairly literate to play this game. Uh, see you later. Bye-bye.